Hey clinical researchers, so yesterday I did a video on pre-site initiation of visit activities that a sponsor needs to make sure occur as far as sites are concerned prior to sites being able to actually screen patients. So that's brought us all the way up until the site initiation visit. And now we're going to talk about post SIV activities. Uh, so at the SIV, you train the site and all the members on the delegation log on the protocol and you collect all the regulatory documents. They're called essential documents and we covered that in the previous video. What happens after the SIV is what we're going to talk about today. And one more thing I want to add, so make sure at the SIV that the site have the lab kits and that they have the investigational product on site uh, and make sure that they have access to the EDC systems and the IWRS and essentially that they're ready to screen. So after the SIV, let's assume that the sites are allowed to screen now, okay? so. First patient in is a milestone. Also, first patient randomized is a milestone. Typically, a CRA will go monitor the site within two weeks after the first patient has either screened or randomized. And what they're looking for are deviations, any issues that they could be proactive about for not only this site, but other site, and also just to get a general sense of how the study's going with this first patient. Okay, so now that the first patient in has occurred, the regular monitoring can begin according to the monitoring plan. Now, this depends on the type of monitoring plan. Is it traditional monitoring? Is it risk-based monitoring where the monitoring plan can actually be adaptive? Is it remote monitoring? Is it 100% source data verification monitoring? You adhere to that plan. Then there's interim data analysis, typically every quarter. And what this means is all queries need to be answered the databases are locked so they're frozen people can no longer the sites can no longer alter or modify the data the queries should be answered and then the biostat the biostatisticians get involved so that they can look at the safety and efficacy data points and see how the study is progressing and and see if it's going according to what they want it to go during this part of the study, they're also looking at protocol amendments. Every study has on average three to four amendments per protocol. That means new trainings. That means new documentations. Uh, that means new informed consents usually. Then they're also looking out for SAEs. They're looking out for, most importantly, the enrollment progress of the study. Most studies are far behind their enrollment objectives at any given point in the study. So this is all going on at the same time. Finally, we get into the payments. This is also going on. So sites need to receive payment for the work they do. This is supposed to be going on on an ongoing basis, monthly, quarterly, yearly, depending on what the sites negotiated with the sponsor. Usually around this point in the study, they bring on rescue sites. Basically, most studies are behind on enrollment, like I mentioned, and add-on sites or rescue sites are brought on. And of course, they need to be initiated as well and they repeat the process for the SIV for these add-on sites, negotiate contracts, all the things we mentioned. Finally, you reach the milestone that everyone's been waiting for the last patient in. And what they do is they'll do a final database lock, they'll disable the IWRS so you, sites can no longer enroll subjects, they'll do the final data reconciliation, they'll schedule the closeout visits, and they'll return the investigational product or destroy the investigational product on site or at the sponsor's facility. Finally, now that the study's over, the biostatisticians get involved again, the regulatory affairs people get involved again, they analyze the results, they package the results, they submit the results to the FDA, and that's that. Hopefully, you were able to learn a thing or two, and uh, catch y'all later 
when I do the final part of this three-part series, uh, FDA submissions, where I'm probably going to have to have Darshan Kulkarni, uh, who's a regulatory affairs expert, get involved on that one. So that one will probably be a Skype interview with him. Take care.